Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth. Or maybe Out of Our Depth. Or maybe Out of Our Atmosphere. Next on Now You Know. All right, so we're talking about a SpaceX launch that there's a lot of controversy over. Yes, yeah, so this is the Zuma launch, which happened on January 7th, and everything looked good in the whole, you know, I was watching the live stream coverage from SpaceX, you know, the rocket goes up, the first stage comes down and it lands, everything seems to have been working perfectly. So what's the problem? So then Bloomberg and the Wall Street Journal came out with stories saying that the Zuma satellite had crashed back into Earth's atmosphere or somewhere in the Indian Ocean or something like that. Whether or not this was the case is now, uh, there's some controversy about this. What, what was the Zuma satellite? So the Zuma satellite was um, a US government satellite. Um, as far as we know, I believe it was some sort of reconnaissance satellite. So or, we don't know what it was. We don't really know what it was. So no basically, one has seen it. So Northrop Grumman actually was the defense contractor that made the satellite. It's over a billion dollars, mm -hmm. and it was put onto SpaceX by Northrop Grumman. Yep. And in fact, the attachment point, what is that called? Like it's a special... Uh, the decoupler. The decoupler was also done by Northrop Grumman, so mm -hmm. SpaceX had nothing to do with that. Right. Um, and then after the launch, the government said that there was a problem that was uh, de didn't decouple properly. Now, here's where it gets interesting, because the government didn't say this. This was from unnamed sources from both Bloomberg and the Wall Street Journal that they said that these were government contacts that they had, okay. um, and that they said that the launch was a failure. And they also said that the whatever it was uh, crash landed into the Indian Ocean. Right. We think that that's not true because there's been some amateur astronomers along with an uh, airline pilot who have seen the uh, satellite whatever it is, Zuma, in orbit. Right. And once you get to orbit, please explain this to me, once you get to orbit, you, you, you don't just necessarily crash land. Right, so if you're able to get something into a stable orbit around the Earth, that means that it is outside of the atmosphere and it has enough tangential velocity that it is able to, it, yes, it's everything that's in orbit is constantly falling towards Earth, but it's constantly missing. It's like if you, you threw something at something, but it was out of the way of it. And right. so that's what's constantly happening is it's orbiting around. Right. Um, so in, orbit, in order to have it crash into the, into the Earth, you have to actually put energy into slowing it down to hit the Earth. So one thing I want to talk about is that um, we don't know what this thing on the top of the um, Falcon was. Right. It, it could have been a spy satellite of some kind, a reconnaissance satellite, mm -hmm. but it also could have been um, some kind of plane. Like a space plane. Like a space plane. Right. Right. And so if you were the government, if you were whatever CIA, NSA group that put this up there, you mm -hmm. might want everyone to believe that it didn't work. So, I mean, that might be part of the mission is to go, oh, our billion dollar satellite failed. We don't really have great reconnaissance when actually maybe you do. Right. Now, what did um, the president of SpaceX say about this launch? After review of all of the data to date, Falcon 9 did everything correctly Sunday night, she said. And she also said any reports that the rocket failed are categorically false. So that is a very strong statement to say that SpaceX did, you know, their mission was a success. Now I'd like to go to this. This is a press conference from January 11th mm -hmm. um, in which um, we had uh, Press Secretary Dana White, Marine Corps Lieutenant General Kenneth McKenzie, who were briefing reporters on what happened. Um, and we have the Bloomberg News reporter Tony Capiccio, and here's what he said. Earlier this week, <coughs> SpaceX launched uh, the Zuma, a classified satellite payload. Does the Pentagon consider the mission a success or a failure, both Dana and General, given its classified payload? I would have to refer you to SpaceX, who, 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 who uh, conducted the launch. No, that's not enough. I'm sorry. I, this is a billion dollar or so satellite. Mm -hmm. It's been four days. Was it a success or a failure? And what's the fate of the satellite? Again, I would have to refer you to them. And I, I, that, that's, that's the answer. But it's not General, a satellite. I mean, is the satellite in a word I'm with Dana. We're not going to be able to give you any more information. So Why, why can't why you not? do that? This is a, accountability is one of your keystones here. The, Absolutely. At, at General, uh, General, Secretary Mattis said this repeatedly. I'm asking you from an accountability standpoint, this thing went bump in the night somewhere and nobody knows what happened to it. Can you give us a sense of whether you consider it a failure or a success as a mission? Again, I'd have to tell you to, you'd have to, I'd have to refer you to SpaceX, which actually launched 
satellite. But you, you're the government, you paid for it, you're the overseers, and you're asking us to go to the company who might have been partially responsible for the problem. I mean, that doesn't make any sense, ma'am. I'm sorry. I understand, um, and, and given the classified nature of all of this, but again, that's, that's, that's the answer. Will you at some point commit to talking about accountability measures the DOD is taking to, not only for the lost capability, but for the lost, I don't know, hundreds of millions of dollars? So, Tony, I would just, I, w I will, I, I will take that, I will come back to you on it. All right, so it doesn't look like he's getting any answers. And this is kind of strange. Why is this strange? You know, regardless of the sensitivity of a mission, the Pentagon would be expected to disclose some level of information, such as whether an investigation is underway, um, and if, in fact, the, a billion-dollar payload was lost, even if it was a classified project. All right, so they should be able to say it was lost, right. or it or, was not lost. Right, um, and they basically deferred the question straight to SpaceX, um, which really is the wrong people to be um, referring it to because it should be going to Northrop Grumman. Because if SpaceX says that, hey, all we know is that our rocket per performed exactly the way that it should have, that means that the first stage launched, the second stage decoupled, and then it, you know, the second stage was carrying the payload that flew into the desired orbit. It would be up to Northrop Grumman to decouple the satellite and have it go into whatever desired orbit they wanted. This means that it's Northrop Grumman that should be answering, and so far they have not commented on it at all. That's kind of weird. It's weird, to say the least. Now, the fact that we've had amateur astronomers, we've had this pilot that show that the satellite is supposedly in space, and in fact, we have even more than that, right? We have the US Strategic Command, now, mm -hmm. what is the U.S. Strategic Command? What do they do? They track every artificial thing that is floating around the Earth. Okay, so we saw that right after that launch, they designated something as USA number 280, mm -hmm. and they started tracking it. Right. And so, and that was the number, 280 was the number designated to the satellite, so we believe that that is this satellite. Right, and so, that means that it made at least one complete orbit. Now, if anything can make one complete orbit, it, it means that it's most likely going to make two complete orbits. Right, and at least it wasn't SpaceX's fault at mm -hmm. that point. Once once you've got it to orbit, SpaceX's job is over. Right. So to be blaming SpaceX, to me, that's one of the reasons why we're doing this in depth right now is because I don't really care that much about what that satellite was, but to say that it's SpaceX's fault that it didn't get there when SpaceX is claiming it, they did their job and it did get there, right. that's a big deal because the government, the U.S. government, is a big client of SpaceX. Right. And they... If they start losing faith in SpaceX, they'll stop launching with them. They'll use ULA instead. Right. Now, none of the SpaceX launches have been changed or altered in any way. There's been no delays. There's been no investigations. There's been no such changes to SpaceX's uh, launch schedule, which means that they are not worried about a thing. Um, and I think that that is really telling because it means that they know that there was no failure on their part. Right. SpaceX has had two secret missions before this, right? They launched um, a secret spy satellite before, and they also launched the X-37B, which is a space plane for mm -hmm. the U.S. Air Force back in September of 2017. Right. Um, both of those went off without a hitch. Let's talk about this Zuma. Yes, like we said, it could be a spy satellite, but there's something else interesting here, which is that there was a two-hour launch window. Mm -hmm. And I want you to talk about that for a second. If you have a two-hour launch window, that means what? So usually a, a launch is, needs to be timed within you know, just a, a few seconds. You need to get the rocket up and into the correct orbit at, at the right time. Now, if you have a two-hour launch window, then obviously you don't really care exactly where it's going in orbit. Why wouldn't you care? Right. If you have a larger launch window, that could mean that you are planning to move, to it. move it in orbit. Which would, to me, sound like a space plane. When you launch a regular satellite, it's in an orbit and it pretty much, it doesn't have a whole lot of, of rocket fuel on the satellite to move it around, mm -hmm. limited, right? So it, it needs to stay in that general vicinity. Right. This one, if it was launched with a two hour window, implies that it probably had the ability to move to wherever it needed to be in its orbit. Right. Um, there is a, a source from one of the stories, we've got the stories linked below. Um, one of the sources was saying that um, conceivably it could have been a space plane or some experimental vehicle launched by the defense contractor or maybe even the CIA. According to one source, 
It said the CIA would have been expected to rely on the NRO for space missions, but from what I've heard has been known to do its own thing on occasion. The source said, my guess is that this was an experimental rather than operational payload. If this were operational, it would have been flown by ULA. So can you explain that? So I guess this would mean that according to the source, if the ULA had launched it, it would have been an operational payload, meaning non-experimental. But because SpaceX launched it, this is an experimental payload meaning that they're just doing experiments on it. So we'd like to reach out to our community, and if you know much about the U.S. Strategic Command's um, space tracking system, and you can look up the USA-280 satellite and see if maybe you can find out where it is in orbit, maybe uh, get your telescope out and take a look and see if you can find it there. Um, anyone who's in this astronomer community who can kind of let us know more information about what you know about what this could, what could be going on with the satellite, right. we'd be very interested. Yeah, just to solve this mystery. The mystery of the Zuma satellite. All right, thank you so much for watching this episode of In Depth. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we have this show come out every Monday, and we have Tesla Time News come out every Tuesday. So thank you so much for joining us. Now you know.